From its possibilities to what it would mean to life as a whole, join us as we ask the question, will 2020 be the year we discover intelligent alien life? Are we alone in the universe? That is the question that many have asked for untold generations, and I do mean that literally, because signs of alien life and sightings go back much farther than you might think, but that's another topic entirely. Regardless of the when or even the who, the thought about life beyond Earth has fascinated us for a long time, because if there is life out there, then we almost feel compelled to discover it and learn what we can about it because if it's not out there in any capacity, then that would raise all sorts of questions as to why Earth was chosen to be the one that has all the life and why there isn't anything else out there. As we enter this new decade, some people are hopeful that 2020 will be the time and place where we get to look up at the stars and find something out there. Not teases, not potential signs of life or even planets that could have life, but actual life, intelligent life. It could be out there and some think this is the year that it'll be found. And then there are those that don't feel that way. Well, despite being the widely celebrated 100th anniversary of the election of Warren G. Harding, 2020 will not likely gain fame as the year we discover extraterrestrial life, said Seth Shostak, a senior astronomer at the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California. I know that this particular scientist may sound like a skeptic, but he is right on one thing. It is unlikely that this will be the year that we discover alien life, but not because we're not trying, far from it. It's just that given all that's happened over the last 10 years of space discovery and exploration, it's hard to say that this year will be any different from any other year that we've tried to look for things. But even Shostak admits that we are trying to find life in 2020. It's just that the area that we need to look at is massive, and I'm not referring to the universe as a whole though we'll get to that, but rather just looking at the Milky Way galaxy, things are much larger than you think. One should remember that this type of search is gaining speed in an exponential fashion, and that particular technical fact allows a crude estimate of when SETI might pay off. If we take, for lack of better estimate, Frank Drake's opinion that there might be 10,000 broadcasting societies in the Milky Way, then we clearly have to examine at least 1 million to 10 million stellar systems to have a reasonable chance of tripping across one. That goal will be reached in the next two decades, but certainly not in 2020, Shostak said. So yeah, based on just that, it would be kind of unfair to say that 2020 will be the year that we find alien life. But again, we are trying, and you could argue that we are getting even closer to finding out whether life truly does live somewhere else in the universe at large. Because not unlike the space programs of the world, of which there are many in many of the biggest countries in the world, there are also national and private companies looking for signs of life. SETI is one, but there are also smaller groups and even people within universities around the world that are dedicated, in the non-conspiracy sense, to seeing if there are alien life forms out there. So as you can see, there are honestly a lot of places looking for signs of life, and this goes to the indirect sense of the word too. After all, agencies like NASA and more are looking for planets that might be able to support life like ours. So by that token, if they were to find a planet that could support life, that might mean that there is already life on it right now, even if it's only in more basic forms. And obviously, there are some planets that could have life on it right now that we're just not able to see or observe in any good measure. How so? Well, think about a water planet, of which there are some that are seriously believed to be that. If a planet was formed full of water and we can't reach that planet, how can we know if there is life under the waves? Sure, we can guess, but it's not a given thing. If life on Earth has taught us anything, it's that life adapts to things that you don't expect them to. Not unlike how in our own oceans, there are geothermal vents that pump out water that would kill just about any kind of life from the heat alone. And yet there are organisms that not only live within those vents, they thrive in it. So who's to say that there isn't life in those waters, even if they are different from our own? Or let's look at something from a sci-fi series called Lost in Space. In the Netflix reboot, the Robinsons are stuck within a gas giant after being sabotaged. They think they're all alone in the gas giant until they hear something getting closer to them only to find themselves getting literally face-to-face -face with a flying whale creature. 
Yeah, there's a whale in a gas giant. How? Why? Because it's another part of the universe, and due to that, the rules may not apply there like they do here. That's the beauty about space. Things that should be impossible aren't. Which brings us to another interesting point about 2020. We don't know what's going to happen in it. So by that token, something could happen that no one expects that shows us that life does indeed exist out there. And of course, there's always the unexpected, Shostak said. In 1996, the biggest science story of the year was the claim that fossilized Martian microbes had been found in a meteorite. No one really saw that coming, so one can always hope to be taken by surprise. Just so you know, the Martian fossils thing turned out to be not true in the grander sense, but the point still stands. If something like a meteorite or a signal or some other thing came to Earth and just dropped proof of life on us, would we be able to handle it? Obviously, it would be debated endlessly, and some would think it to be fake even if it's proven real. That's just the nature of humanity, but it could happen. But to predict that this year would be the one to have it happen? Yeah, that's a bit of a stretch even for long-term scientists in this field. I am skeptical about picking a specific year for the first discovery. Previous predictions of success have been wrong, said Michael Michaud, author of the thought-provoking book Contact with Alien Civilizations, Our Hopes and Fears About Encountering Extraterrestrials, Copernicus, 2007. I and others have observed that the continued improvement of our search technologies and strategies could boost the odds for success, Michaud said, noting that the primary focus of SETI remains on radio signals. However, we still don't cover all frequencies, all skies, all of the time. Other types of searches have failed too, such as looking for laser signals or Dyson spheres, ET mega engineering projects. Those campaigns usually have limited funding and often don't last long. That's not to say that they're giving up hope, it's just that they're tempering their expectations because who knows when and where the first true contact with life will take place. Before we discuss more possibilities of alien life, be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That way you don't miss any of our weekly videos. But now let's look at the other side of this equation. What if we once again don't find anything in 2020 that signals intelligent life in space? What does that mean? What does that imply? Well, the answer is routed in another theory of the universe known as the Fermi Paradox. Despite its very scientific name, the Fermi Paradox at its core is a question, and more importantly, a very simple question. A question that actually happened in the most casual of places, a conversation between friends. Physicist Enrico Fermi was with his friends, who were fellow physicists themselves, and had lunch with them during a particular day in the summer of 1950. Nothing strange about this at all. As they began to chat with one another on the way to lunch, the topic of UFOs came up. During the late 40s and early 50s, there were many UFO sightings all over America and even the world at some points. This created a hysteria of sorts as to whether we were really alone in the universe. But naturally, most governments and logical people felt that these aliens were hoaxes, and many were proven to be just that. However, as these physicists talked about the possibility of alien life, a question came to Fermi, and while the exact question is actually lost to history, the basic concept of it is, where are they? Where are whom, you ask? The aliens. That's what Fermi was asking, because based on his reasoning and his very true logic of the universe as a whole, there honestly shouldn't be a reason that we haven't met aliens of some kind, or at the very least, haven't discovered that there is alien life out there in the universe right now. This may seem like one in a long line of far-fetched theories, but this paradox is one that has taken root in the culture of the world, because it's a question and a paradox that can't easily be dismissed, and because of the question itself, but rather the science that is inherently behind it. Because while it's true that the universe is very large and it would be hard to look exactly where they potentially are, that shouldn't mean that we haven't found something, right? Now yeah, if there was, say, one civilization of some kind on a planet that was on the far other side of the universe, then that would make sense that we haven't found it yet. But why isn't something anything? Any clue or proof of life being found with all of these amazing scientists and research groups and companies and such looking for those things? That's the big question. And outside of the it's a big universe response, 
there isn't much of an answer. Although there may be an answer in a place only a few are looking. After all, what is language? Other than what we deem it to be. If you put a native English speaker with a person from, let's say, China, and they both spoke their native tongues, they wouldn't be able to speak to one another, right? Now imagine that they're across a field from one another, can't see one another, and all they hear are cries from something they can't recognize. Would they be able to tell that it's a person doing those calls? It's hard to say, and that's what's so interesting here, because while it's true that by the process of the Fermi paradox, we should have found proof of alien life by now. The simple truth within that truth is that we might have, but didn't recognize it. What would happen if the alien race didn't use radio signals? What if they used light to communicate, or a kind of telepathy? And on and on it could go. Finally, there's the question of what kind of life would we find? Call it arrogance or optimism, but when we picture aliens, we don't think of animals. We think of humanoid or close to humanoid life forms that we can interact with. But what if we go to a planet and all there are are animals? Intelligent animals, mind you, not unlike what we have on Earth, but not exactly creatures we can communicate with. Would that put a damper on things? Not really, because should we discover a planet like that, especially in 2020, it would indeed change the way we look at things. And that's what the discovery would honestly be about. In my view, all these things combine to increase the chances over the next decade of finding extraterrestrial intelligence. I would caution, though, that any discovery would be an extended process, consisting of detection and interpretation before any understanding is achieved, one scientist said. This is clear from the history of discovery, even when we thought we had evidence in hand. And that's very true, as alluded to earlier. Any find of extraterrestrial life would be examined to take the biggest and smallest detail possible in order to make sure we're not looking at something fake. But when it's proven real, the way humanity would react would be something to behold. One thing that is certain is that we are getting a better handle on the issues of societal impact, should such a discovery be made. Many more social sciences and humanities people are getting involved in astrobiology, which is all to the good. In other words, we are preparing for discovery. Yes, we are preparing ourselves for discovery, but when that will happen is unclear. Get that shouldn't dissuade us, far from it. For regardless of whether it's 2020, 2120, or even 3020, we're going to keep looking because we can't help but look at the stars and wonder, are we alone in the universe? Thanks for watching everyone. What did you think of this look into why we may or may not discover alien life in 2020? Which of these two options do you think is the most likely? And just as important, if we did find alien life, what do you think it will be like? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time on the channel.